，佛说四十二章经，佛说四十二章经。Translated by the Shanghai Translation Committee, January 2009. From the Chinese translation by Masters Kashyapa, Matanga, and Gog Horona, EST Century. Sutra Annotations, January 2009. Prior English translations of the Sutra by the Buddha Text Translation Society. D. T. Suzuki, John Blofeld, and others were used as references. The Changtai Translation Committee comprises of Dharma masters and lay disciples and convenes regularly. To view or download other sutra translations by CTTC, visit Dharma Genes on HTTP 冒号双斜线 Sunnyvale 点 San 点 Org. Comments and suggestions may be sent to translation at citizen 点 Org. Namo Fundamental Teacher Shaikhon Muni Buddha. Nan Wu Ben Shi Shi Jia Mu Ni Fo. Sutra Opening Gatha. Kai Jing Ji. The Dharma, infinitely profound and subtle, is rarely encountered even in a million cultures. Now we are able to hear, study, and follow it. May we fully realize the Tathagata as true meaning. 无上甚深微妙法，百千万劫难遭遇。我今见闻的受持，愿解如来真实意。The Sutra of Forty Two Chapters. 一 Introduction. In the year of 67 CE, at the special invitation by Emperor Ming of the later Han Dynasty, two Indian Buddhist masters from India, Kashyapa, Matanga, and Gopharana, arrived at Luoyang, Luoyang, China. Five years before their arrival, in 62 CE. Emperor Ming had dreamed that a golden man flew into his palace. The next day, he consulted his advisor, who told the emperor that must be the sage Buddha. In 64 CE, a delegation was sent to India to seek the Buddha Dharma. Kashyapa, Matanga, and Gopharana came with white horses, bearing precious sutras, Buddha statues, and relics. The emperor built the main monastery, the very first Buddhist monastery in all of China, aptly named the White Horse Monastery. There they undertook the great task of translating the Sutra of 42 chapters, the first Buddhist text translated into the Chinese language. In the Sutra there are aspects of Theravada and Mahayana expedient, means an ultimate reality. Gradual cultivation and sudden enlightenment. Even more importantly, all of the various teachings in the Sutra of 42 chapters are ultimately one single vehicle, pointing to one single goal: enlightenment. Today, one can go on a pilgrimage to the graves of these two great Buddhist masters in the ancient White Horse Monastery in Luoyang.
China. Generations of Buddhists are forever indebted to Venerable Kashyapa, Matanga, and Venerable Gopharana for this monumental scripture. The Sutra of 40, two chapters. Er. The Sutra of 40, two chapters. The Buddha speaks the Sutra of 40, two chapters. Translated into Chinese by Kashyapa, Matanga and Gopharana. Of the later Han Dynasty. Prologue. Having attained Buddhahood, the world honored one reflected. To abandon desire and be immersed in stillness is the supreme way. Abiding in profound samadhi, one subdues all evil. The Buddha turned the Dharma wheel of the Four Noble Truths at Deer Park and led Kundinya and for others to attain the fruit of the way. There were also Pixas who had various questions and implored the Buddha for guidance. The world honored one, taught and directed each one to enlightenment. Joining them, Pumps with reverence and promise, they complied with the Buddha's noble instructions. Chapter E renounce the secular life and attain the fruit of our hardship. The Buddha said, those who take leave of their families and renounce the secular life, who know their mind, penetrate to its origin and understand the unconditioned dharma are called shramanas. By always observing the 250 precepts, being pure and unblemished in their conduct and practicing the path of the four truths, they then become arhats. Arhats possess the powers of levitation and transformation. Their lives may spend many kalpas, and they can move heaven and earth. Prior to Arhats are the non-returners. At the end of their lives, conscious spirits of the now, returners will ascend above the 19th heaven, where they will attain our headship. Prior to now, returners are the once returners who ascend to the heavens and return to earth at most once before they become our heads. Prior to once, returners are the Sutra of 42 Chapters Sam The stream and peers who go through birth and death at most seven times before attaining our hardship. Once desire and lust are eradicated like severed limbs, one will never use them again. Chapter er, No, Mind is the Way. The Buddha said, those who renounce the secular life to become shamanas eradicate desire and lust, recognize the source of their own mind, penetrate the profound doctrine of the Buddha, and awaken to the unconditioned Dharma with nothing to gain from within and nothing to seek from without, their minds are not attached to the way, nor do they accumulate karma with no thought, no action, no cultivation, 
and no attainment, they transcend the successive stages and reach the loftiest state of all. This is called the way. Chapter 7, Desire Makes People Foolish. The Buddha said, those who shave their head and beard to become shamanas and cultivate the Dharma of the Way should renounce worldly possessions, be content to beg for alms, and take only what is needed. Eat one meal a day before you pass the nights beneath trees, and be vigilant not to desire more, for desire and lust are what make people foolish and deluded. Chapter 4 The Ten Evils and Ten Virtues The Buddha said, in sentient beings, ten actions are virtuous and Ten are evil. What are they? Three pertain to the body, four to the mouth, and three to the mind. Killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct pertain to the body. Malicious, abusive, false, and frivolous speech pertain to the mouth. Envy, anger, and ignorance pertain to the mind. These ten deeds, known as the ten evils, are not in accord with the noble way. To renounce the ten evils is to practice the ten virtues. The Sutra of 42 Chapters. Si. Chapter 5. Reducing the severity of offenses. The Buddha said, if a person with many faults fails to repent and sees immediately the thoughts that cause harm, his offenses will consume him, just as waters return to the sea which becomes ever deeper and wider. If a person with faults realizes his errors, corrects his actions and cultivates virtue, his offenses will naturally dissolve, just as sweating enables a sick person to recover gradually. Chapter 5 Tolerance Without Resentment The Buddha said, when a malicious person hears about goodness and intentionally comes to provoke trouble, you should restrain yourself, do not be angry or reprimand him. Evil deeds will fall back upon the evil doer. Chapter 7 Evil Deeds Return to the Doer the Buddha said, someone came to insult me upon hearing that. I uphold the way and practice great benevolence. But I kept silent and did not respond. After he had stopped, I asked him, if you bring someone a gift and he does not accept it, does the gift remain with you. It does, he replied. The Buddha said, now, you insult me, but I do not accept it, this insult will only bring yourself harm. Huh? Just as echo follows sun and shadow trails form, there is no escape. Be vigilant to do no evil. Chapter 5, To Fling Dust Into the Wind The Buddha said, an evil person who harms a sage is like one who spits toward the sky. The spit does not reach the sky, 
bubbles back on himself. When one flings dust into the wind, the dust does not hit others but is blown back on himself. The sage cannot be harmed, evil actions will inevitably destroy the doer. The Sutra of 40, 2 Chapters 5. Chapter 9, Knowledge and Practice The Buddha said, for those who accrue extensive knowledge of the way, becoming enamored with it, the way is difficult to attain. For those with unwavering resolve in following the way, the way is great indeed. Chapter 10 Joyfully aid others in giving. The Buddha said, when you see others practicing then again, joyfully aid in their efforts, you gain great blessings. A. Shramona asked, Will these blessings ever be exhausted? The Buddha said, It is like thousands of people who light their torches from the flame of a single torch to cook food and dispel darkness, yet the original flame is undiminished. So it is with these blessings. Chapter 11, Fields of Blessings The Buddha said, It is better to offer food to a single virtuous person than to one hundred evil people. It is better to offer food to one who observes the five precepts than to one thousand virtuous people. It is better to offer food to one stream and purer than to ten thousand who observe the five precepts. It is better to offer food to one once returner than to one million stream and purer. It is better to offer food to one now returner than to ten million. Once returners, it is better to offer food to one arhat than to one hundred million non returners. It is better to offer food to one pratyakabuddha than to one billion arhats. It is better to offer food to one of the Buddhas of the three periods of time then to 10 billion Pratyaka Buddhas. The Sutra of 40, 2 Chapters. 6. It is better to offer food to one of no thought, no abidance, no cultivation, and no attainment than to a hundred billion Buddhas of the three periods of time. Chapter 12, 20 Difficulties in Cultivation The Buddha said, people have 20 kinds of difficulties. It is difficult for the poor to practice dana. It is difficult for the rich and eminent to practice the way. It is difficult to renounce life when facing death. It is difficult to encounter the Buddhist Sutras. It is difficult to be born in the age of a Buddha. It is difficult to subdue desire and lust. It is difficult not to covet what one likes. It is difficult to face humiliation without anger. It is difficult to have power and not abuse it. It is difficult to face situations with a detached mind. It is difficult to master vast areas of knowledge.
It is difficult to extinguish self-conceit. It is difficult not to belittle those who are unlearned. It is difficult for the mind to act with impartiality. It is difficult not to gossip or be judgmental. It is difficult to meet the right, learned teacher. It is difficult to see one as original nature and practice the way. It is difficult to guide beings appropriately to liberation. It is difficult to be unperturbed by circumstances. It is difficult to master the expedient means of the way. Chapter 13 Questions about the way and past lives. Asia Mama asked the Buddha, what enables one to know past lives and to attain the supreme way? The Buddha said, by purifying your mind with unwavering resolve, you will attain the supreme way. It is like polishing a mirror, when you remove the impurities, brightness is revealed. By eradicating desires and seeking nothing, you will gain knowledge of past lives. The Sutra of 42 Chapters 7. Chapter 14 Virtue and Greatness Asia Mama asked the Buddha, what is virtue? What is greatness? The Buddha said, to practice the way and abide by. The truth is virtue. When your will is one with the way, that is greatness. Chapter 15 Tolerance and Purification Asia Mama asked the Buddha, what is great power? What is the brightest light? The Buddha said, tolerance under insult is great power, because it harbors not hatred but peace and fortitude. Those who are tolerant are free from evil and will be honored by others. When the mind is utterly purged of defilements, it is pure. Without blemish or filth, that is the brightest light. From before, the formation of heaven and earth, and through the present, there is nothing in the ten directions that one does not see, hear, or no, this all-inclusive wisdom is indeed brightness. Chapter 16 Renounce Desire to Attain the Way The Buddha said, those who harbor desire and lust cannot see the way. When our hands disturb clear water, none who gather beside it can see their reflections. Similarly, when people are aroused by desires, their minds are so muddled they cannot see the way. You should among us should renounce desire. When desire and lust are purged, the way will manifest itself. Chapter 17 Light Dispels Darkness the Buddha said, seeing the way is like entering a dark room. Holding a torch, darkness dissipates and light alone remains. When you follow the way and see the truth, ignorance vanishes. And enlightenment always remains. The Sutra of 42 Chapters 8 Chapter 18 The No Mind Doctrine The Buddha said, 
my doctrine is to be mindful of no mind to act with non action to speak the inexpressible and to cultivate non cultivation. Those who understand this are close to the way. Those who are confused are far from it. The way is beyond speech and conception, and nothing can constrain it. To Mrs. Peavy's point, by a hair, as breath is to lose the way instantly. Chapter 19. Meditate on the elusive and the real. The Buddha said, observe heaven and earth and contemplate impermanence. Observe the world and contemplate impermanence. Seeing one as awareness is body. With this understanding one swiftly attains the way. Chapter 20. The Self is Empty. The Buddha said, one should be mindful of the four great elements of the body. Each of them has a name, but an intrinsic self cannot be found. Since the self is empty, it is illusory. Chapter 20. Seeking fame consumes the person. The Buddha said, people follow their desires to seek fame. But, the time fame is achieved, the body has fallen apart. Craving for, lasting worldly fame instead of learning the way, we wear out the body with futile efforts. Like a burning incense, its body is turning to ashes as people smell its scent. Be aware, the imminent fire will consume you. Chapter 22 Wealth and Lust Bring Suffering The Buddha said, people are reluctant to renounce wealth and sex. These are like honey on a knife, as blade, which is not enough. To appease one, as hunger, yet a child who licks this honey is in danger of cutting his tongue. The Sutra of 42 Chapters 9 Chapter 23 The Family is Like Prison the Buddha said, men are bound to their wives and homes more than the confinement of a prison. One may be released from prison, but a wife has no desire to let go. How dare one be reckless and indulge in passion and lust? Although they are as Dangerous as the tiger, as just people yield willingly, throwing themselves into the mire and drum. That is why they are called ordinary beings. Those who break free from this prison can transcend all defilements to become our hearts. Chapter 24 Sexual desire hinders the way. The Buddha said, there is no desire more powerful than sex. Sex, as a desire has no equal. Fortunately, there is no other like it. If there were, no one in the world would be able to cultivate the way. Chapter 25 The Fire of Lust Consumes the Body The Buddha said, people who succumb to lust are like those who walk against the wind holding a torch, they will surely burn 
Their hands. Chapter 26. They attends the Buddha. A Deva offered the Buddha beautiful maidens, wishing to corrupt him. The Buddha told the maidens, skin, bags filled with filth. Why are you here? Be gone. I have no use for you. The Deva was filled with respect and asked the Buddha the meaning of the way. The Buddha instructed him whereupon he attained the fruit of stream and pure. The Sutra of Forty, Two Chapters. 十. Chapter 27, Logs in the Stream. The Buddha said, those who cultivate the way are like logs in a stream following the current. If they are not grounded on either shore, gathered by men, intercepted by demons or spirits, caught in whirlpools, and they do not decay, then I guarantee that these logs will reach the ocean. If those who follow the way are not blinded by sensual desires, led astray by evil influences, and are diligent yet empty of effort, then I guarantee that they will attain the way. Chapter 28 Be wary of the unbridled mind. The Buddha said, be wary of trusting your own mind, for it is deceptive. Be wary of situations that may incite lust, for those will lead to disaster. Once you have attained hardship, you can trust your own mind. Chapter 29 The Right Way to Counter Lust the Buddha said, be wary and refrain from looking at women or speaking with them. If you do, be righteous in thought and contemplate, I am now a Shamana living in an impure world. I should be like the lotus flower on sunny by mud. You should Regard elderly women as your mothers, those older than you as your elder sisters, those younger than you as your younger sisters, and the little ones as your children. Resolve to liberate them all, thereby extinguishing impure thoughts. Chapter 30 Avoid the Fire of Desire the Buddha said, people who cultivate the way are like those who carry hay, they should avoid fire. Cultivators of the way must keep their distance from desires. The Sutra of 42 Chapters 11. Chapter 31 A still mind extinguishes lust. And then plagued with incessant lust wish to castrate himself. The Buddha told him, rather than castrate yourself, you should curb your mind. The mind is like a commander, when the commander holds, so will his subordinates. If you cannot cut off Lascivious thoughts, what is the use of castrating yourself? The Buddha recited the following verse. Desire arises from thinking. Thinking arises from conception and discernment. When both aspects of the mind are still, there is neither form nor action. 
The Buddha said, this verse was spoken by Kashyapa Buddha. Chapter 32 Desire leads to fear. The Buddha said, fear arises from worry, and worry arises from craving and desire. If you abandon desire, what fear or worry could you have? Chapter 33 Perseverance in Spiritual Battle The Buddha said, one who practices the way is like a single person battling against 10,000, donning his armor and leaving home, his will may weaken, he may retreat halfway, he may be killed in combat, or he may return victorious. When Shramamas follow the way, they should be resolute, diligent, and valiant, not fearing what challenges lie ahead, they destroy all demons and attain the way. Chapter 34 Dharma of the Middle Way one night a Shamana was reciting the Sutra bequeathed by Kashyapa Buddha. His tone was woeful and tense. Plagued by doubts, he thought of abandoning the monastic life. The Buddha asked him, what did you do when you were a householder? He the Sutra of 40, two chapters. Shi'er said, I was fond of playing the lute. The Buddha asked, what happens when the strings are too loose? He replied, there is no sound. What happens when the strings are too taut? He replied, the sound is discordant. What happens when the strings are neither too loose nor too taut? He replied, all the sounds are in harmony. The Buddha said, it is the same when a Shramana is practicing the way. If his mind is properly tuned, he will attain the way. If he pursues the way too impetuously, his body will be weary. If his body is weary, his mind will be vexed. If vexations arise, his practice will regress. If his practice regresses, his faults will increase. However, if he remains pure, serene, and joyful, he will not lose the way. Chapter 35 Expel defilements and the mind becomes pure. The Buddha said, when a man forges iron, he removes impurities to make tools of the finest quality. When those who follow the way expel defilements from their minds, their deeds will be pure. Chapter 36 Stages to Non-Attainment The Buddha said, it is difficult to ascend from the three wretched destinies and be born as a human being. Even as a human being, it is difficult to be born as a man rather than a woman. Even as a man, it is difficult to have all six senses complete. Even without physical or mental impairment, it is difficult to be born in the middle country. Even in the middle country, 
it is difficult to be born at the time of a Buddha. The Sutra of 42 Chapters. 13. Even at the time of a Buddha, it is difficult to encounter the way. Even having encountered the way, it is difficult for one to generate sufficient faith. Even with faith, it is difficult to bring forth the body mind. Even with the body mind, it is difficult to realize non-cultivation and non-attainment. Chapter 37 Be mindful of the precepts. The Buddha said, if disciples thousands of miles away from me are mindful of my precepts, they will surely attain the fruit of the way. If those who are by my side and see me constantly do not uphold my precepts, they will never attain the way. Chapter 38 The Impermanence of Life The Buddha asked Ashramana, how long can one be sure of staying alive? A few days was the reply. The Buddha said, You do not know about life. He asked another Shramana, How long can one be sure of staying alive? The land of Anu was the reply. The Buddha said, You do not know about life. He then asked another Shramana, How long can one be sure of Staying alive? The reply was, a single breath. The Buddha said, Well said, you know about life. Chapter 39 The Dharma is like honey. The Buddha said, students of the Buddha, as we should have faith in and comply with all that the Buddha says. It is like honey, sweet from the surface to the middle. So it is with my sutras. Chapter 40, Ox Turning and Millstone The Buddha said, Shramanas who practice the way should not be like oxen turning millstones, although their bodies follow the path. Their minds do not. If the mind follows the way, what need is there to labor on the path? The Sutra of 42 Chapters. 14. Chapter 41 A steadfast mind frees one from desire. The Buddha said, one who practices the way is like an ox that carries a burden through a mind. Although very tired, the ox dares not look to the right or to the left. He cannot rest until he gets out. You shamanas must look upon sensual desires as worse than a filthy mind. Being steadfast and mindful of the way, one can avert suffering. Chapter 42 Seeing the Illusions of the World The Buddha said, I look upon positions of nobility as dust drifting through a crevice. I look upon tracers of gold and jade as mere marble. I look upon garments of fine silk as worn out rags. I look upon the universe as a small hairy tacky fruit. I look upon the water of the Anapatapta lake as oil applied to the feet. 
I mean Kapong expedient means as a cluster of imaginary jewels. I mean Kapong the supreme vehicle as a dream of gold and silk. I mean Kapong the Buddha way as a flower in the air. I look upon Samadhi as the great pillar Mount Suburu. I look upon Nirvana as being awake both day and night. I look upon Deviancy and Orthodoxy as six dancing dragons. I look upon the doctrine of impartiality as the absolute ground of reality. I look upon the flourishing of the teaching as a tree in four seasons. Having heard the Buddha as discourses, the great Hyksas joyfully accepted and followed the teaching. 15. Sutra and Annotations 16. The Sutra OF 40, two chapters the Buddha speaks the Sutra EOF 42 chapters. Translated into Chinese by Kashyapa, Matanka and Gokharona of the later Han Dynasty er. Prologue. Having attained Buddhahood, the world honored one said, reflected, to abandon desire and be immersed in stillness Wu, is the supreme way. Abiding in profound samadhi Liu, one subdues all evil qi. The Buddha turned the Dharma wheel back of the Four Noble Truths to at Deer Park Shi and let Kundinya Shi and for others to attend the fruit of the Way Shi Er. There were also Pixas Shi Sen who had various questions and implored the Buddha for guidance. The world honored. One talk and directed each one to enlightenment Shi Si. Joining their palms with reverence and promise, they complied with the Buddha's noble instructions. Jing Xu. Shi Zun Chen Dao Yi, Zuo Shi Si Wei, Li Yu Ji Jing, Shi Zui Wei Shen. Zhu Da Chan Ding, Jiang Zhu Mo Dao. 于路野院中转四地法轮度教臣儒等五人而正道果富有比丘所说诸仪求佛尽志世尊教士一一开悟和长尽诺而顺尊士苏叉 and annotations 十七 title E Sutra, Sanskrit, Fo Jing. Fo Jing Jing Fo Fo Jing, a Buddhist scripture containing the dialogues or discourses of the Buddha. Er later Han Dynasty, Er Shi Wu, Liang Bai Er Shi Si. San Shi Wu years after the demise of the former Han Dynasty, Liang Bai Ling Liu. 8 BCE, also known as Western Han, a relative of the imperial family re established Han with Wuyong as the capital, east of Chang'an, the former capital, which was also known as the later Eastern Han Dynasty. It was during the reign of the second. Emperor Han Ming the Han Ming Di, circa 70 CE, that Buddhism was brought to China by two Indian Buddhist masters, K. 
Kashyapa, Madhenka. Edgar Purana, who also translated the Sutra of 42 chapters into Chinese. Prolog. Said the word honored one. Bhagavata, Sanskrit. One of the ten. Honorable titles, Shiha, of Sheikh Muni and all other Buddhas. The ten titles are in Sanskrit and Chinese. Tathagata, Rulai, the scum one, one who comes from the truth, the scum one, one who neither comes nor goes. Arhat, in Gong, one who is e, worthy of offering, er, killer of. Thieves Arhat has killed the thieves of afflictions and defilements. And, said, free of future rebirths. Sen Mayak, Sen Buddha, Zhen Bian Zhi, rightly enlightened, one who knows the whole truth. Vidya, Corona, Sen Pana, Ming Xing Zhu, perfect in wisdom and Action. Sukata, Shan Shi, well, gone, a good death. Low Cabot, Shi Jian Jie, knower of the world. Anatara, Wu Shang Shi, the unsurpassed one. Pure Saint, the Maya, Surata, Diao Yu Dai Fu, the Tamer. Sasta Day, Mamus Yunun, Tian Ren Shi, Teacher of heavenly and human beings. Bhagavan, Shi Zun or Bao Jia Fan, were numbered one. Si desire. Here it refers to all levels of attachment to worldly phenomena which are the cause of suffering. Wu stillness. A state of mind in absolute peace and serenity. Liu Samadhi, Sanskrit. A highly concentrated state of mind achieved by meditation. Sutra and Annotations. Shiba. Qi evil. To subdue all evil means to overcome all demons who try to Block one as practice. Badharma will. A Buddhist emblem. Dharma, the Buddha, as teaching, is likened to a will because it can crush illusions and ignorance. To turn the Dharma will is to spread the Buddha, as teachings. Jiu the Four Truths refers to the Four Noble Truths, the foundation of the Buddha as teaching. They are e, the truth of suffering, er, the truth of the cause of suffering, san, the truth of the cessation of suffering, and si. The truth of the path that leads to the cessation of suffering. Shi Deer Park. The place where the Buddha delivered his first sermon to the five Hikses. It is in Sarnas near Varanasi, long considered a Buddhist holy place in India. Shi Yi Kudinya. The first disciple of Sheikh Yomuni Buddha to become enlightened and one of the first five hikses that followed the Buddha. The other four are Padrika, Fasta, Mahanama, and Ashvahit. Shi'er the way. The truth or the path of 